In homework assignment seven, you will be asked to do three main tasks. First of all is take your solution of homework five and extend it to just use the do notation, EFF bind, which indirectly will use EFF bind and EFF pure. So basically rewrite the code so that it's, it's gonna be much simpler uh, by using the do notation. Another thing you're asked to do is to use match everywhere. So instead of using cond, always use match. You should have no cons in your code. Uh, another thing you're going to be asked to do is handle uh, multiple arguments, which we're go I'm going to show you in the next few slides, um, and function declarations with multiple arguments. This is done uh, with currying, which you've learned already. Uh, finally, w I will ask you to extend the, the interpreter to also support primitives and support if, the, the classic if, right? Um, so primitives and built-ins. So you should start by, uh, in the interpreter, by the, do, the first add the memory parameter, abstract everything with the do notation. Maybe start with this one. Make sure that your um, function is monadic so that the parameters have to be um, in the, the same way that I showed you in the in the in module six. Um, you can also start with pattern matching, which is uh, take your homework five and convert every conditional to pattern matching. Maybe that's simpler, and you can this one you can you can run and test uh, directly uh, using match instead of cond. Uh, use pattern matching uh, instead of using the accessors directly. Um, yeah, if you do not des if you decide that you want to give up homework five, I can give you a solution to homework five, but then you won't be able to submit homework five again. This also assumes that homework five will be closed when that happens. Um, then there's another thing I will I will ask you to write is you can think of handling multiple parameters with this following two examples. So in in function declarations, right? you will have something like x, y, z, and it needs to be transformed into a lambda with x, that inside has another lambda with I, y, inside of that has another lambda with z. Uh, and when you have, the spe there's a special case when there are zero parameters, which you should create a lambda that takes uh, just a single parameter, that is the underscore. Um, and finally, when you have function application, you have to do the reverse, which means f of one, two, three, should be f of one, nested inside function call for two, nested inside function call for three, and also with an empty, a special case for a function with zero parameters, where you should just call it with passing void. Uh, so this would be d call and void. Um, for branching, Notice that the way I, I give the syntax is um, already assuming currying, right? So it means that if is only taking one argument. So it's a, a, a function that takes a function. Something that takes three parameters that after being curried only takes one at a time. And the idea here is that you evaluate uh, the condition first. And if the result is false, you should only then evaluate the term true. Otherwise, you evaluate the term false. So here the order matters, uh, and the only thing you have to check if it's the result is false or not. Uh, actually, this is flipped, right? Because if it's false, it should be the term of false. I need to fix this, actually. In the slides. I'm sure in the PDF it works. It's fine. Um, next thing is a recap or a revisiting of homework three where we had this built-in functions. So we want to be able to support that. So we have addition and all that. Uh, again, the, you only need to add support for um, functions that take one arguments at, in the execution because the, the conversion from multiple arguments to a single argument, that's another, that's a separate stage. That's done at compile time. So that will be just a function that takes, takes an AST, returns an AST. That's what I'm trying to say. Uh, so in this case, what we're saying is we're going to return something, a, a new AST node that is called a built-in that has a parameter called f. 
Uh, and then what you have to do is you have to pass, in this case, what this means. It means call F and pass the result of evaluation of EA to it. Okay. Uh, and that's basically it. That's the last thing. So, ah, uh, actually this is important because the note that I'm saying here is that when you evaluate a function, you just need to make sure it can be either a closure or a built-in. And then if it's a built-in, you do this. If it's a closure, you do as before. So now you have two ways, you know, depending on, first you evaluate. So now you have two rules, right? You have an evaluation for function application, uh, where the result is a closure, and then you have another one for function application where the result is built in. So you need to have some matching. After you evaluate the function, you need to do a pattern matching on its results to see if it's a closure or a built in. Um, and I guess that's it. That's That ends it. So I'm going to fix this slide or revisit to make sure it's correct. Have a good one.